Tell me what's going on, man. Tell me what's going on. I I'm gonna help you through it. I'm I fucking was born, man! I'm Holy shit! Jesus Christ, soldier! Get up. I show up here to train you two and you're not even out of bed yet? I'm gonna give you to the count of ten. Get your ass downstairs. One. Hey, brother. Two. Don't call me, brother. My name is Corporal Francis. Get up. Mayday, mayday. Spencer's mother is a whore. Kelly, a shut up. whore. Shut up. Mayday. Spencer's mother is a That's whore. It. That's it. She likes it up the ass. Don't you talk about my mother. Spenny's drunk. That's fucking great. You people just want blood. It's a fucking blood sport, right? Blood sport. Blood sport. Spenny's down. Spenny's hurt. Spenny's down. Kenny wins. Kenny wins. Kenny wins. Kenny wins. Now, I said I was doing Wild Boys next, and I'm still kind of working on it. I gotta go through the whole series and rewatch it, so sorry for the false advertising in the Viva La Bam video. But with that being said, there's one show that I had planned to review for this that I actually didn't realize debuted a few months before Wild Boys and Viva La Bam. It's another Canadian entry in the Jackass Generation Rolodex. This is Kenny versus. Spenny. Kenny vs. Spenny. If you were Canadian, this show meant a lot to you. I know it aired in the States, I just don't know how popular it was, so fill me in if you're an American viewer and if you're familiar. But Kenny vs. Spenny was something that started off kind of quietly and then blew the fuck up amongst my age group at the time. But let's talk about what the show's about first. Kenny vs. Spenny followed two best friends, Kenny Hotz and Spencer Rice, who share a townhouse in downtown Toronto. This is actually near my buddy Brad's house within walking distance, but in season one, they actually lived in a different house. I think this is Scarborough or East York. I actually, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to go scout it at some point, but I think those are those townhouses by Vic Park and Gerard. But uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Kenny and Spenny are two friends who compete in various competitions with each other. Competitions such as who is a better chef, who can drink more beer, and who can produce the most semen, just to name a few. And yeah, I'll be talking about some more individual episodes throughout the video. Now, I can't be 100% on this, but I'm pretty sure this is another case of a sitcom formatted as a reality show. Yeah, they always said the show was real, but come on, I doubt Kenny actually fingered Spenny's mom in Who Can Get Further With The Other Guy's Mom while she was passed out drunk. My guess was it was a situation where scenarios were set up, but the character interactions and subsequent reactions were all improvised. I could be wrong, but I am 99% sure that is the case. Regardless of if it was half real, half fake, mostly real, mostly fake, etc., it was a fucking riot. And yeah, it pitted two people in situations where they did gross shit on television or put themselves in danger, so it could be considered a direct cash-in on the popularity of the Jackass-style shows of the era. Originally, the show was shot as a three-minute pilot pitch to MTV in 2000, but for unknown reasons, MTV passed on it. I don't know if it had to do with Jackass coming around or Tom Green still being there, but they were just not interested. Following year in 2001, the USA Network had them shoot a pilot but cancelled before the pilot was finished. Despite this, Kenny and Spenny decided to finish the pilot and take it to Canadian Network CBC who greenlit the series and ordered a 26 episode first season. Now I do recall the show airing on CBC, but this isn't where I got hooked in. Season 1 aired on a free-to-air broadcast channel in an early evening time slot, so while it did push the envelope sometimes, it was mostly a soft PG-13. It was a very tame show. The competitions were more straightforward, and more often than not, were the focal point of the episode. Kenny was portrayed as sort of an obnoxious roommate, and Spenny was the straight man to his antics. Kenny would cheat and use loopholes to win whenever he could, and Spenny was a competitor. He wanted to win on his own merits most of the time. Kenny is a delinquent, Spenny's a solid citizen, etc. The ultimate prize for winning a competition would be that the winner makes the loser perform what is called a humiliation, and that was sort of a punchline to the whole competition. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Now, you may have noticed that I said the competitions were 
more the focal point in season one, which may make you think, you know, oh, that's the whole premise of the show, Kenny vs. Penny. But just hold that thought for now. Season one had its moments where it was funny, but the Kenny and Spenny personas weren't quite developed yet, and they weren't in an environment where they could truly be all they could be. So after the first season, CBC cancelled Kenny vs. Spenny. There are many reasons that have been cited for this, one of which was claimed by Spenny, who said that CBC noticed ratings for its 5 o'clock news program dropping, and they figured that it was because viewers who switched to CBC early would often catch the Kenny vs. Spenny humiliation segments in the last 10 or so minutes of the program, which would deter them from sticking around for the 5 o'clock news. Another reason I heard is that an ad for the show accidentally aired during CBC's toddler block, which, okay. I don't think very little kids who would be watching a toddler-based programming block would even be able to comprehend anything they saw, which wasn't that bad anyway. Like I said, season one was relatively tame. So if this was the reason, I think that's a complete overreaction. I mainly remember the first season of this show because it aired in a programming block, which I guess was targeted at preteens and teens on the CBC that aired between four and five. So just when kids were getting home from school. The other show that aired on this block was this crappy animated show called Chili Beach, which holds no significance whatsoever and it was pretty quickly forgotten. I also mainly remember Kenny vs. Spenny because it aired at 4.30, which was right before the CBC News is mentioned and uh, an hour before the 5.30 Simpsons rerun on the same channel. Season one was not where the show would carve its legacy in Canadian television history. No, it would take cancellation to get it to that point because after it was canceled on the CBC, it was picked up by the on the rise Canadian cable channel, Showcase, television without borders. Showcase now is kind of a shit channel. All it really shows is like CWDC shows and like superhero movies and Star Wars and like some other crap programming, but mostly now it's just American shows. But in its heyday, it was almost like our HBO. Now it was basic cable, so it did have some regulations on what it could show, specifically during the day, but at night, it showed movies completely uncut. It had shows that were practically softcore porn, both fictional and reality-based. And it was where we got to see HBO's Oz for the first time in Canada. And it had a little show called The Trailer Park Boys. I won't get into Trailer Park Boys now because that is a future video for sure, but Trailer Park Boys was a show that caught on fucking fire in Canada. I think it's truly the last Canadian show to really explode in the way that it did. And the significance of all of this is that Kenny vs. Spenny was actually the lead out program for Trailer Park Boys when it jumped to Showcase. And when it made this jump, shit was able to go off the rails in a spectacular fashion. The characters of Kenny vs. Spenny blossomed and so did the scenarios that they were put in. With practically no censorship holding them back, they could get really vulgar, crude, and disgusting at any point in time. The contests could actually have a sense of danger to them, but most importantly, the characters of Kenny and Spenny could evolve to become two of the greatest characters in Canadian TV history. As I had mentioned, Kenny was sort of a degenerate who made snarky comments and cheated in competitions in the first season, but by seasons two to six, he became a fucking sociopathic abuser of Spenny. He would make the crudest, most obnoxious jokes possible, and would go to tremendous lengths not only to cheat Spenny out of a victory, but to torment Spenny. I fucked her, and I really fucked her hard, and fucked her, and I fucked her, and... I just kept fucking her. Kenny became a master of manipulation. A prime example of this is included in the Who's Cooler episode, where Kenny fakes becoming a hardcore heroin addict in order to get Spenny to drop his entire plan to be cool and help Kenny get off the drugs. And then when he reveals the facade, Spenny's attempt to be cool, which probably would have failed anyway, just completely falls flat because Spenny is so uptight. This isn't even the only overly elaborate scheme. Uh, the things Kenny did just to beat Spenny or humiliate him without making him do a humiliation include the Who is Funnier episode, which consists of Kenny going to great lengths to make sure Spenny thinks he may have gotten HIV in order to make him depressed before a stand-up routine, which, again, let's be real, probably wouldn't have won anyway. There are people um, who are sexually turned on by number two. What happens is that at that point, does X lax become Viagra? Or even faking his mother's death. They're exposing Spenny to radiation during the Who Can Produce More Semen contest. Kenny Hotz is a fucking evil genius, and that's what made the show great. The character of Kenny Hotz is about as cartoony as a character can be in live action. He would plot all these elaborate Batman gambits to get Spenny to lose or just to bug Spenny. A prime example of this is in the Soldier episode, where he purposely sets the bar so low with himself in the eyes of the drill sergeant that when he inevitably 
inevitably gets better at being a soldier, he manages to impress the drill sergeant and pull a victory. It's kind of impressive how devious he was even when he wasn't technically cheating at all. And his abuse of Spenny was one of the main attractions of the show, and sometimes he would do it not even for the purpose of winning a competition. One time he just like pissed on him or he'd go around saying that Spenny was gay and like he would just get Spenny all riled up. He's got dildos, books, gay magazines, condoms, and what the fuck is this? Did he piss my bed? He pissed my bed! Just, to, just for fun. And yeah, it was funny watching Kenny abuse Spenny and watching Spenny freak out. It goes without saying that most viewers, including myself, were Kenny fans because he was funny, he was obnoxious and loud, and he did shit that made us think, yo, I can't believe he fucking did that. Kenny was the cool one, even if he wasn't supposed to be the bad guy, but really, outside of the first season, neither one is really good or bad. But I could argue that Spenny was a worse person at his core than Kenny. Spenny evolved from being kind of a straight man who had some very minor character blemishes, but was otherwise a well-meaning and well-adjusted person, and he became a neurotic, paranoid mess with both a victim and superiority complex. He always calls Kenny a narcissist, but throughout the show, despite being a neurotic wreck, he shows more signs of narcissism than Kenny does. Much of what he does that he claims is well-meaning is insincere or for some kind of self-gratification. On occasion, he does sink down to Kenny's level, but it just kind of blows up in his face. He tries to hold himself to a higher class than Kenny, but he has a lot of bad tendencies shown throughout the series, and some of his actions in the show are on the same level or arguably worse than Kenny's. A prime example of this is even seen early on during the season one episode Who's a Better Chef? Spenny can't cook, Kenny can, and Spenny uses this and Kenny's cheating ways as justification for cheating himself. But despite cheating, he still loses to Kenny decisively, but the defining moments for Spenny as a character are really seen in seasons two and three. The first of these is during the Who Can Drink More Beer competition. It's a simple contest where or two people drink beer, but Kenny cheats and gets non-alcoholic beer. Spenny, through the course of the episode, sheds his softer exterior, which is a callback to when Kenny said that Spenny's a horrible drunk. It's the diabolical genius against the drunk. Whoa. He is a horrible drunk. I'm not a drunk! Stop shit. calling me a drunk! You're led to believe that Kenny's just talking shit. But no, through the course of the episode, Spenny becomes an angry, violent, drunken mess. Like, it's pretty fucking ugly. At first it's funny, but then it just kind of stops being funny because of just how bad his behavior is while drunk. The second, and arguably the biggest one, is in Who Can Sell More Bibles, which is also in season two. Kenny basically tricks Spenny into thinking that he has sold a script to a major production company, as Spenny wrote this key shitty kids movie called Hubert the Hopopotamus. Spenny immediately gets this huge ego boost, starts blowing off the competition and the show itself. In fact, his ego is so inflated that he decides to buy a bunch of Bibles off Kenny, and then, you know, Kenny's playing along with it, he's like, you know, he's, he's acting exactly how Spenny thinks he would act during a situation by pretending Spenny's bullshitting. And then, of course, as the contest goes on, Kenny starts acting like he believes him, and Spenny just turns into a total dick, turns his back on his friend, says it's him now, it's just Spenny versus the world now, and he goes up to Hollywood to get this huge script done. Of course, you know, he finds out later that Kenny set the whole thing up to fuck with him, and he's pretty mad about it. And then there's another minor moment where, you know, during the Who Can Win a 10 Mile Race episode, Kenny fakes his mother's death, and, you know, Spenny's being nice, he's helping Kenny get through it, but on the way to the funeral, Spenny's in the car, and he just got, starts going off on how Kenny's mother wasn't a saint, how she let Kenny act the way he did, and basically starts burying a dead woman on television, so yeah, he's not, you know, the saint that he thinks he is. Benny's dickishness is usually scaled appropriately to the episode. On some occasions, yeah, he's genuinely a victim of Kenny's shit, but an equal amount of time he is such a prick you feel literally no remorse for him when Kenny does something bad. Sometimes, even when he's trying to be positive, it just comes off as uncomfortable. A prime example of this is when he tries to kiss the gay guy in Who Do Gay Guys Like Better, where each member goes on a gay date. Like, he thinks that, oh, this gay guy is just gonna be immediately into Spenny. I don't know, it was bad. And the, but the worst is when he does this KKK exercise with a group of black guys in the Who Do Black Guys Like Better episode, which I, I ugh. In true comedy fashion, you can't have a wacky character who does wacky, horrible things like Kenny unless you have a character who's the victim of these things and can react appropriately. And Spenny's reactions were fucking hilarious. He could go from being mildly irritated to legitimately outraged, and he killed it each time. Let me masturbate alone! 
Throughout the series, Kenny won more than Spenny, mostly through cheating, but sometimes he did it clean and down the middle. But calling back to what I said earlier, the contests were the focal point of the show in the first season, but at this point it wasn't so much about the contests. It was about the antics, the character moments, the insane situations of the show. The contests were nothing more than a framing device, and the show was not afraid to just go completely off the rails and abandon the contests altogether at times. Like, it would just sometimes degrade into a live-action fucking cartoon. In fact, Spenny even says this during the fucking Who Can Imitate the Other Guy episode when Kenny, pretending to be Spenny, eats shit out of the toilet. Oftentimes, the episode would just entirely revolve around making Spenny humiliate himself even before the humiliation segment. Which, uh, yeah, let's talk about that. Some of these humiliation segments are just things that are kind of embarrassing or funny, but some are straight-up fucking disgusting. Like, I still gag at some of these, but by far, my favorite humiliation isn't even really a humiliation in the traditional sense. Spenny, sick with the radiation poisoning, has lost the semen episode, and is told that for humiliation he has to drink a shot of Kenny's jizz. I'm gonna, you know, the whole thing with Kenny trying to negotiate Spenny to do it with this fucking classic line. Better. Away. Do you know how many fucking, like, chicks would love to chug my fucking baby you? juice? It is one thing, but then, you know, after realizing Spenny's not gonna fucking do it, Kenny throws the shot of jizz in his mouth and just fucking bolts, and Spenny's reaction is one of the funniest fucking things ever. What? I think the most impressive aspect of this show is that people really thought it was real. I thought it was real. I mean, I was a kid. I met Brendan, the sound guy who's always laughing on the show, and yeah, he protected the narrative. I'm sure they would all protect the narrative, but I bought everything they were selling no matter how unrealistic it was. It was like looking into a different reality. You have these two characters who are over the top, but the show and the world around them is so grounded in reality that you can buy their existence as real. The scenarios were obviously set up or even staged, but it was played so fucking straight that it felt more real than it was. It's impressive. Superman the movie said, you will believe a man can fly. Well, Kenny vs. Spenny will say, you will believe a man tricked his best friend into thinking he had AIDS. You will believe that a man tricked his friend into thinking he just got signed a major Hollywood deal. You will believe that Kenny fucking irradiated Spenny and then threw homeless cum in his mouth. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, I didn't get into this show during its first season on CBC. I was aware of it, but it just kind of passed me by. I got into it during the showcase years, around when season 3 was airing, and you know, I was at the height of my jackass fanboy era, so I was all in. I had remembered the show, but I mostly recall being reminded of it by my friends Adam and Dylan, who constantly talked about the show at lunchtime in high school, and I decided, hey, I'm gonna check it out again, it's on after Trailer Park Boys, and I was fucking hooked. We would reference it, we would fucking act out like Kenny sometimes, and you know, this was truly a defining television show of my teen years. It is also special because it was shot in and around my hometown of Toronto. You could run into Kenny and Spenny in the wild. I never did, I had friends that ran into them. I mean, I met Brendan, the sound guy, and you know, he was a nice guy, but I, I kind of wish I ran into Kenny or Spenny, but I mean, I still could, but it's been years since the show was on. This show was truly one of the last staple shows of Canadian television. It's one of the pillars of Canadian comedy shows. Like, if I had to name the pillars of Canadian comedy, it would be SCTV, Kids in the Hall, Red Green, Trailer Park Boys, and Kenny vs. Spenny. I would love to talk more about my favorite episodes, but there's a reason this is Child of the Jackass Generation 6A, because I'm going to do a 6B, which is going to cover my top 10 favorite Kenny vs. Spenny episodes. This show has left such an impact on me that is the only piece of non-Jackass or non-CKY media in the Jackass Generation series to get two videos. And yeah, this is one of the few shows that actually means enough to me where I could probably do 10 videos on it if I wanted to. Kenny vs. Spenny aired from 2003 to 2010 with six seasons, and honestly 2010 was such a fucking weird year for me, and this show ending is a big part of that. It was the last year that I attended my original high school, a lot of things really changed that year, and Kenny vs. Spenny ending was really the end of my childhood. And yeah, you could say, oh, your childhood ends when you're a teenager, it's like, but no, you're, you're pretty much a fucking child until you're, like, out of high school. Kenny vs. Spenny ended two months after Jackass 3D was released, something that I'm going to talk about later this year or later in the Jackass Generation series, but it was truly the end of the Jackass Generation when Kenny vs. Spenny finally ended. The finale was an hour-long Christmas special, which was ironic because both Kenny and Spenny are Jewish, and it wrapped the entire series up, but not in a satisfying way. They successfully left me wanting more Kenny vs. Spenny, and I guess that's the best way to conclude a series, to leave the fans wanting more. 2010, like I said, was just a bizarre fucking year where a lot of shit in my life changed, and this 
show ending didn't help. Following the conclusion of Kenny vs. Spenny, Kenny and Spenny each got their own spin-off show, and symbolic of how the episodes often went, Kenny's show was well received, and Spenny's show was fucking shit on. Kenny Hot's Triumph of the Will was a show that aired for one season and featured Kenny doing some weird tasks by himself, such as trying to get a Jewish-funded mosque built and finding a boyfriend for his widowed mother. I never watched it, so I can't really review it at this point in time. Maybe down the line in the later phase of the Jackass generation, I'll give it a shot. But it won a Gemini Award, which is Canada's equivalent of an Emmy, and was generally well received. But it concluded after its first season and was not renewed. And then there was Single White Spenny, a mockumentary comedy show following a fictionalized version of Spenny, which was just fucking horrible. This, uh, yeah, I might have to try this one again, but I saw like one episode and it seemed like Spenny was really stroking his own ego because he gets a lot in the show. Uh, it was bad and not well received, and it was also cancelled in his first season. Smitty would try to backtrack later and say he had nothing to do with the writing of the show, despite having a writer's credit for all eight episodes, but maybe he was just trying to save his ass because he knew how disliked the show was by audiences. A couple times throughout the years, Kenny Hotz has tried to get another season of Kenny vs. Spenny, but to no avail. Oddly enough, you'd think with how popular the show was, someone would have at least given him a short seventh season or something. He tried Netflix from what I've heard, and other streaming services and got nothing. This was shortly after Netflix brought back Trailer Park Boys. Uh, he did go on tour with Spenny a few times, and still does, well, he stopped during the pandemic, but it seems now it's just not gonna happen. A new season of Penny vs. Spenny is just not gonna happen. But in 2020, they did shoot a sort of TV special that didn't have the Kenny vs. Spenny branding and only indirectly referenced the show, but captured the spirit of it called the Paldemic. Basically, Spenny lost all of his money in a Ponzi scheme, and Kenny has him come over and humiliate himself on TV for half an hour. I thought this was like a soft pilot to try and get a new show or get the show revived, but nothing really came of it despite the special being well received by fans and critics alike. Sadly, the time for Kenny and Spenny has come and gone. If they did a seventh season, I'd probably watch it, but like Spenny is 60 and Kenny's my fucking dad's age, so my expectations would be low. The show was available on Netflix a long time ago, but not anymore. Kenny did have episodes on his YouTube right after the cancellation, but they got pulled and then brought back. Besides the episode Who Do Black People Like Better, which was pulled after the George Floyd murder, uh, Kenny actually started uploading episodes remastered in 4K until all of them inexplicably vanished. He has since re-uploaded season one and some episodes from the other seasons, but, you know, they can't all be found in full. And I think this is because Breakthrough Entertainment, the production company behind Kenny vs. Spenny, actually have all the episodes in a much lower resolution on their YouTube page. I'm guessing they they're using the original hard copies because they all have the showcase branding. And yeah, there's an issue I want to bring up about the Breakthrough Entertainment uploads is they're all censored, probably because they want to monetize, but season two has the biggest issue. Half the episodes are titled wrong, and some of the episodes have this weird syndicated version edit, like they have these alternate edits, for example, Who's Funnier replaced HIV with gonorrhea. Love got you into this and love is gonna get you out of this, Benny. <laughs> she was such a skank. And it's like, no, the fucking, the whole thing, the plot doesn't work if it's just gonorrhea. The whole thing was, Ke fucking Spenny was freaked out that he had HIV. Yeah, I almost said Kenny, fuck you, it's hard. So if you really have no other way to watch it, that's one way on the Breakthrough Entertainment YouTube. I'll throw the link in the description. The show did get a DVD release, but that's been out of print for years. And of course, there isn't another way you can watch the show, but I personally cannot encourage you to do that, especially when they're on Breakthrough's channel for free. Kenny vs. Spenny was truly the last pillar of Canadian comedy comedy on television, and while it's long gone and many have forgot about it, I will cherish the moments of laughter that I had and still fucking have for the rest of my years. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks, Spenny. Thank you for making my unbearably horrid teen years a little more bearable. What are your thoughts on Kenny vs. Spenny? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to check the YouTube pages out if you want to experience the show for the first time, or just go down memory lane. Next time, I'm, um, I, I'm gonna, uh, um, I'm gonna review, um, I don't know. I, I don't know what video I'm doing next, so, uh, uh, stay tuned. Why are you wearing a stupid hat? And what are your pants you're wearing? What the hell are those? You're wearing like capri pants, sailor boy. You love semen. You should be on it, but I love my semen. You sure do. You I do. like when it you comes out. It. I see him in the bathroom sometimes. He's like, Mama. And he goes, He's not looking. So Grandpa, you were my first lover. Grandpa, you said there was no other. Grandpa, Grandpa would open the door and see little Spaniel asleep. 
He'd wiggle his finger as he sucked on my dink. Grandpa, stop molesting me. Grandpa, stop molesting me. Grandpa, I fucked you up the ass. I'd break into Grandpa's room in the old folks' home. Because he had Alzheimer's, he wouldn't know. I'd pull down his pants and have my way. If only my grandpa loved me the way he loved my penis.